Hey, 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 what's going on, guys and gals? Hey, this morning we are going to take Audacity and we are going to turn it into the Ronco chicken rotisserie. Okay, we are going to set it and forget it. And we're going to do that through the preferences. So we're going to come up to edit and we're going to set this for uh, LibreVox. We're going to come to preferences. We're going to come to devices, and this really isn't a whole lot that you have to mess with, except right down here. You want to take this and you want to put it on mono. That way you always start off in a mono channel. Okay? And I'll show you, there's another way to check it. Uh, real easy, you know, just in case somebody gets on your computer or, you know, my granddaughter gets on mine. Half the time I go in here and go to click something and my speakers don't work, my monitors don't work. And I know exactly who to go to, but, you know, bless her heart, she wants to learn. She's 14, so uh, she's going to do what she wants to do. Uh, playback, you don't have to worry about uh, recording. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything in here. Quality, we're going to be at 44.1, okay? 44,100 hertz. We're going to be at 16-bit. Now, just so you guys know, most CDs, uh, they are cut at 16 bits. And it has to do with what they call dithering. You can dither once, you can dither twice, but don't you dither around my wife. Uh, that was a song we put together about eight years ago. And the uh, sample rate. Now, guys, you can put this on high quality if you want to. Uh, I do it on the slowest. I always go with the best quality I can get. Here we're talking about dither, and we're going to go none. Uh, the high quality conversion, same thing. Uh, you, can, you can put it on uh, high quality. Or best, it just slows it down a little bit. Uh, here, the dithering will be shaped. Okay. Now, the interface, if you look up here at my meters, okay, and you'll see, man, I, I love stretching out my meters. I want to see exactly where my input levels are and my noise floor, uh, noise floor levels are. And that way, I can really stretch them out. And that's where you set that at. Okay. And that, that's what will make that meter stretch out like that. English is the language of the manual that I have. Uh, beep on completion of longer activities. You know, if you're rendering a file or what you guys call exporting, we call rendering. Uh, it'll just beep and let you know that it's done, kind of like your microwave going off. Okay, now the tracks. Uh, you want to set this on your waveform DB. Okay. Uh, default audio track name is audio track. So the rest of these right here, you, they're pretty well stock, uh, default. You don't have to mess with them. Uh, spectrograms, if you're going to use it, you need to be in linear. Uh, the minimum frequency, of course, would be 0 hertz. Max frequency would be about 8,000. Just so you guys know, most male vocals, they pretty well cut off anywhere between 8,000 and 10,000. Uh, females with high-pitched voice, uh, they normally get up to 11,000, 12,000. Uh, hertz range the colors the gain the 20 all this is stock just you know you, you don't have to mess with any of this now this right here when you get ready to export your file this is this where the meta tag data editor comes up now sometimes LibreVox will allow you to put you know recorded by your name in the comment field other than that, they don't want you really putting any uh, metadata in there. So if you don't want to see that screen pop up every time, you would uncheck this box. But like I said, I just I just leave a check because all you got to do is click OK and OK. And then it's a done deal. Now, there's nothing you're going to worry about with the extended imports, uh, the projects. Uh, always copy all audio into project, guys. Do this, okay? It might take a little bit longer, but I promise you, I, I go through this all the time. I get hundreds of emails a month. You know, Mac, I've lost my file, man. I don't know how to get it back. And you, see, you know, if you delete it, or, or they, they went to save it, they had a power outage, the, the system crashed. You know, save at the beginning of your recording and save often, all right? Just like you would do with any other project. Libraries. Now, if you ever come up here and you're trying to export your audio and you're going, man, I don't have that option for the MP3. 
and I'm going to show you that here in a second too. Well, this is this is where you would find it. You come to libraries and you just go to locate. Watch this. See, it already knows where it's at because I've got it in there. So let's go to download. Boom. Right there it is. Takes me straight to their website, Audacity Team. Okay. So that's how you find these two right here. Now the uh, FFmpeg, what this does is, you know, you have different formats for, for audio. You got WAV files, you got OGG, you got TIFF, you got uh, just all kinds of them. And once you get up into that real professional level. And what this does, this allows Audacity to open up each of these types of files. That's all that does. Okay. It, it's a good thing. Same thing. It's a good thing to have it in your system. Directories. This is simply where your temporary files uh, are stored. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, warnings. I don't normally check this, guys, but this is not a bad idea. Uh, mixing down uh, to stereo during export because Librivox wants it in mono. Okay? If you somehow mistakenly try and get it into stereo, you're going to get a warning that says, do you really want to mix this down to a stereo track? And you're going to go, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. So that's not a bad thing to have checked. Okay? Now, effects. And I'm going to show you right up here with the effects and the analyze. And I'm going to show you how I set mine up. And uh, this, for me, is just the easiest way. Group by type. And like I said, I'll show you that here in a second. Now, if you notice, they have the VST now, the VAMP, the LV2, the LADSPA, and the Nyquist. Now, the VST, these are third-party plugins that Audacity will now see and use. But this is the thing. Audacity is a 32-bit program. If you're going to use an external plugin or a third-party plugin, it's got to be 32-bit. Okay? And then we have uh, keyboards and the mouse. And guys, these are where you do your shortcuts. And I promise you, if you take the time to learn where some of these shortcuts are, you won't touch your mouse. It will it'll make your workflow just go so much quicker. And, you know, it just saves a lot of time. So that's, that's the one for your keyboards. That's the one for your mouse. And that's it. So we're going to say, OK. Now, remember I told you about how they group the effects? See, I've got Audacity here. There's just a few of them in there. Nyquist, there's nothing in there. This is the one that's got the great big long, ah, I need to play the Jeopardy thing. I can't even whistle right now. Mm, I can't even hum. But anyway, as you can see, and it's just a pain in the butt. Okay, but you can go through, and I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. There's a lot of these you're just not going to use. You simply go in there and you delete them uh, from the Audacity plugin folder. Okay. But now here is the VST. So I've got some things in here that I just, uh, just things you do with audio. If you've installed the replay game, this is where you're going to find it in okay, 2.1.3. So I would come up and I would analyze this with the replay game. And it's telling me that I've got to go and reduce this to negative 7.5. Now, the replay gain works off of the 89 dB principle, which means your playback is going to be around a negative 6 dBs. So now that I know I have that information, I can simply come up to Effects. I can come to Amplify, and I'm going to go a negative 7.5. Okay? Now, as long as you see this minus sign, you'll never have to click this box. As long as you see a minus sign here, your audio will never clip. It is just impossible. We go OK. And we're done with that. Now, I can see right here that it was, uh, and I told you I'd show you this in a little bit. Uh, it's in a mono file. Of course, we can see that. It's at 44,100 hertz, and it's at the 32-bit float. OK. Now, remember, Levervox wants it at 16 bits, and that's why we put it up there at 16 bits. So at this point, we would come down. We're going to export the audio. And uh, let me just name this SDFG. 
And here's where you put it into the MP3 constant bit or 128. Uh, the variable speed, you don't have to mess with this. Okay, the stereo, none of this. You don't have to click this box and you're just going to hit save. Now, this we're going to go ahead and clear. Now, if you do get to the point where they say, you know, you're working on a project and they go, well, yeah, man, you can, you can put your information in the comment field. Well, you can come up here and you can build what's called a template. And see, read by Dana Tucker, yada, yada, yada. So we'll go ahead and clear that. Real easy to do. That's why I was saying, you know, it's just so easy to click OK. And, uh, you know, instead of having to go up to the preferences, check the box, bring it up. So at this point, we're simply going to go into MP3 Gain. We're going to come up and we're going to add this file. We're going to analyze it. And there we are at 88.2. We are 8 tenths of a dB off the target range. And we are not in the red, which means we have not clipped. And that's it, guys. That is the entire procedure. That is the Ronco rotisserie for Audacity. Okay, set it, forget it. And unless you go in there and manually change something, it'll always be like that. All right, so I do want to check something because I truly did not check it uh, before we did this. So I'm going to import that file now. And let me come down here and grab it. Because I want to make sure the, okay, here we go. I wanted to make sure that 16-bit uh, PCM came up, you know, just like I told you guys. So that's it. Okay. Take care, God bless, and we are out of here.